Welcome to the Great Base and Smoke Jumper Base here at the National Interagency Fire Center. We're part of the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, which employs almost 2,200 firefighters annually, all fulfilling roles on some 285 engines, 19 helicopters, 11 hotshot crews, and two smoke jumper bases, one of which you're about to get to know a little bit better. As a part of your tour, this video will give you a glimpse of the complexities of our extensive operation and hopefully answer some of the questions you may have regarding our program. Smoke jumping dates as far back as the late 1930s, when prior to World War II, the U.S. was experimenting with parachuting firefighters into remote areas. Today, there are some 450 smoke jumpers across the western United States, Air Forest Service, and two are BLM, the Alaska Smoke Jumpers out of Fairbanks, and the Great Basin Smoke Jumpers here in Boise. Our head count here ranges between 70 and 80 firefighters. In order to become a smoke jumper, you must first have a solid foundation in firefighting. Most of us come from a hotshot crew. Which is a 20 person hand crew, considered elite because they undertake very difficult and strenuous assignments. Other wildland experience is also helpful, be it from an engine, a helicopter, or what have you. If one is so inclined to attempt our rookie training program, they are subjected to a full five weeks of extremely intensive physical and mental stress in order to assure they can function under the strain and duress of parachuting into an unfamiliar jump spot to suppress a wildfire. Hundreds of prospects apply each year, only a few of whom are selected, and of those, not everyone will make it through the rigorous training. However, once through rookie training, Smoke jumping has a remarkable safety record. Due to our stringent physical and parachute training, smoke jumping is statistically as safe or safer than any ground-based firefighting resource. We take very deliberate precautions when sizing up a fire jump. We fly low pass, 300 feet above the ground over any new jump spots to assess hazards. By throwing crepe paper streamers, we're able to judge the wind speed and direction, which determines our pattern and approach. We make a careful plan in the plane, based on what we know, and always jump in at least teams of two. We never actually jump into a fire, but as near as safely possible. All of our gear, with the exception of our actual parachutes, is constructed by us, right here in our loft. We have the best understanding of our own unique requirements for safety and function, and therefore we all learn how to sew and construct our own equipment. Our jumpsuits are made of a puncture-resistant, non-flammable Kevlar material, the same material used in a bulletproof vest. Beneath that is an arrangement of hard pads. Our neck and head are protected by the suit collar and caged impact helmet. The harness supports our main parachute on our back, reserve parachute on our chest, and our personal gear bag, which we'll carry with us on the fire. The whole setup weighs about 95 pounds. If you have the time while you're here, feel free to try a few things on. We all enjoy the parachuting, but more importantly, it's proven to be an efficient method to deliver firefighters. Misinterpreted as an expensive resource, an airplane's speed, range, and payload, coupled with the rapid deployment of highly experienced fireline personnel and equipment, makes smoke jumpers extremely cost effective. There are eight jumpers on a plane load, along with the pilot and spotter. The spotter is an experienced jumper who performs the duties of a mission coordinator. When spotting, they'll stay with the airplane, deploy the jumpers out the door, kick cargo, coordinate with dispatch and fire management officers, and organize logistics for demob and standby. One plane load can staff fires with two to eight jumpers. Our cargo comes after we land. Each box has supplies for a team of two with tools, sleeping bags, and enough food and water for 48 hours. Once we're on the ground, the job is the same as any other firefighter. We clear all the fuels, anything that can burn, away from the edge of the fire, stopping its spread. Where needed, we'll dig a fire line, much like a hiking trail, to keep the fire from creeping along the ground. If air support is needed, we call it in, the ground forces working in close conjunction with the air. Fuel type, fire behavior, and weather dictate what kind of equipment and tactics will be used. If a fire is relatively small and manageable, 
Two jumpers may be all that is required. The bigger the fire gets, the more resources needed. Since we're often the first on scene, we frequently assume command of a fire. If it's large enough to necessitate multiple resources, the whole load may convert into supervisory positions, managing personnel, logistics, and equipment rather than running a chainsaw or swinging a hand tool. Local land managers determine the final status for fire. It may be fully suppressed. Or contained and left to monitor status. Or let burn for ecosystem benefit. If they want it 100% out, that means every smoke and hotspot is completely extinguished. Once our goals are met, we demope. All that gear we dropped in with needs to come out. So we pack it up and pack it out. At about 120 pounds, sometimes more, the pack out can be a grueling part of the job. As you can imagine, it's not always over easy terrain. Hopefully there's a road near or a helicopter available to assist. Once back in station, we rig our own chutes, prepare our cargo, and maintain a high state of readiness. Fire is an extremely dynamic natural phenomenon, and we must stay fluid in order to keep up. As the Great Basin smoke jumpers, we cover southern Idaho, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado daily throughout the fire season at the request of our managers. We'll pre-position an aircraft with a contingent of jumpers in an area with a high probability of fire activity, which means we could staff upwards of four separate outstations in the heat of the season. Our fire season typically runs from early June to late September, starting in the south and moving northward with the summer, but we could go anywhere at any time. Additionally, many of us are certified to fill important roles other than smoke jumping. We can provide individuals to larger fires as overhead upon request and qualified personnel to fill in supervisory and managerial positions at the district, state, regional, and national levels. You can imagine the logistics involved, coordinating several aircraft and 80 accompanying personnel across multiple states. We've covered a great deal of information very quickly, but hopefully this has provided you with the foundation of how we operate. Please feel free to ask any one of us any questions you may have and enjoy the rest of your tour.